Welcome to Toy Poloi. Parental guidance. This video contains scenes of Lego destruction. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at uh, seeing if we can restore one of these vintage Star Wars land speeders and get it back up and running. Both of them have been in the battles, both of them have got some serious issues but I reckon from the remains of these two I should be able to get one really nice looking land speeder. So let's take a look what's wrong and then we'll see what we can make from them. Okay so what have we got? Well there are two land speeders here. One is a Palatoy version which is this one here. You can tell it's Palatoy because it's got a solid front and these silver panels on the side are actually stickers rather than a piece of plastic with a chrome sort of finish on them and then we have this one which is a Kenner version uh, but you can see here that the uh, back uh, sort of jet has snapped off we're missing the canopy there uh, the panels on the side have also been painted white or maybe that's Tipex or something like that the latch for the front section here which should sort of flip up is uh, missing we're also missing the little control stick inside which uh, does the sort of levitation motion it also feels like there's springs missing so there's a whole load wrong with this but I'm reckoning that by taking a few parts from this one and making some bits from scratch we should be able to get this version back up and running it's going to be a challenge because I, I've never done some of these things before I have a previous video fixing up a land speeder where I've shown how to mend the little mechanism here if you have the mechanism this one is completely missing so we're going to have to fabricate that from scratch I've also got a video showing how to make a replacement windscreen glass so that should be fairly straightforward to do but we've got to make that latch as well we've got to try and get all the paint off this chrome it's going to be quite a project but I think uh, with some work we should be able to end up with one very nice looking land speeder so first things we've got to do is take this apart see what's missing and then uh, we'll see what we can do about fixing things so um, yeah let's take this apart see what we can do okay so let's uh, see what we're working with we need to open this up there are four screws on the bottom so we'll just undo those it's certainly been uh, well played with over the years there's a few cracks as well and a lot of uh, sort of scratches around but as I say it's a fairly sort of uh, structurally sound uh, land speeder so I'm hoping that it should be reasonably easy to fix but uh, we'll have a look inside it's definitely missing a load of pieces uh, and that's the bits we're going to have to fabricate but until we get inside and have a look I'm not quite sure what is going on Right, so now we've got the screws out, let's just take this apart. It should just pull apart. There's nothing else holding this together as far as I'm aware, unless it's been glued or something like that. I can see some glue residue at the bottom and some sticky tape inside. So maybe someone has glued this together as well. Hard to know. Yeah, it certainly feels a bit stuck there. I might have to prize that with something. I think someone has possibly glued this together at some point. Is it coming? Yeah, it looks to me like there's some glue there. So let me uh, work on that off screen. See if we can prize this apart. From Kenner's Star Wars collection, it's the Land Speeder. Wow, it looks like it's floating. Here come the sand people. It's up from Skywalker and his Land Speeder to get us out. Action figures each sold separately. You better check the turbo reactor and fill the space hatch with supplies. Hurry, they're advancing. Wait for R2D2 and C3PO. Activate spring glide wheels. The force goes with us. The Star Wars Land Speeder. Action figures sold separately. New from Kenner. Okay we are in and that was a lot more work than I'd expected this has certainly seen a lot of action I reckon a, a, a parent or someone has sort of worked on this because everything has been glued back together there's a lot of stuff broken a lot of stuff missing but the uh, clips that hold the seat on which should be on this top section here are missing so what they've then done is glued the seats onto the bottom section of the land speeder so you can see here there's some glue residue and a little bit of the uh, seat is left behind so that's why it was so hard to get apart someone has glued this all together there's also bits of tape holding everything in so yeah it's a real mess and then we've got these uh, side panels which as I say have been painted you can see that's the original chrome on the inside and then it's been painted white I'm going to say that it may be emulsion paint it may be gloss paint I'm not quite sure so I'm going to have to do a few little tests just to see if you know what will remove that it may be if it's emulsion we could just soak it in water and it may come off but I have a feeling it's not going to be that easy I think we'll have to use some brake fluid to get that off and then re-chrome these pieces but yeah 
this is a mess probably far worse than I was expecting but you know what I reckon we can have a good go at fixing this I'm going to take the rest of this apart there's a spring missing at the front maybe two yeah there's two springs missing at the front there should be a spring on that post going to that little hook there same as we've got at the back which is fine because we can take those out of this one or we could use a bit of elastic but we've got the springs at the back so if we just unclip that spring there and unhook it put it to one side do the same on that one then we've got all of this in pieces and I can give this a quick clean and then we'll start seeing what we can do to uh, resurrect it. Right, everything has had a good clean now so it's looking a whole lot better. Uh, the paint didn't come off these panels so we'll have to deal with that separately but there are a few structural issues that need to be uh, sort of addressed before we go any further. It looks like something has uh, trodden on this maybe at the front because you can see here this post is uh, snapped. It's not broken fully off but it's sort of halfway there. Uh, there's also a crack on this front panel here just out at the front so we can fix that from the inside one of these little posts as well is uh, come off these just hold the uh, two sections together uh, that one has come off there so we can fix that and then of course the most obvious thing is this rear jet has come off now I'm going to say at some point someone has tried to fix this as there's some glue residue on both sides of this so what I've done is I've just taken my knife and uh, gently scrapes away that glue because we're going to be using plastic weld to uh, join these two bits back together and any of this sort of glue is just not going to uh, help that stick so I've scraped that away there I've also scraped it away on this part here so now we can just use some plastic weld we should be able to fix all of these issues with the same thing so this is the stuff I use this is EMA plastic weld you apply it with a brush and the sort of plastic that this is made out of it works really well it essentially fuses it back together so the join will be as strong as it was originally so let's go around and uh, fix all of these I can just put some on the rear side of these things capillary action should pull it into the joins you don't really want to put it on the outside because you'll get a little mark so if you do all the fixes from the inside it should be fine and then on this one I'm just going to sort of paint it on until this goes nice and tacky likewise on that and then we can hold those two parts together and I'm hoping that will fuse really well and we don't need any sort of uh, reinforcement put in there but um, time will tell on that one so let's just have a go and see if we can fix all of these issues quickly and uh, see what it looks like at the end. Okay, so that has all worked. It took a little bit of fiddling to get this rear engine to stay on, mainly because there was glue residue everywhere. I had to scrape some more of that off. But now that I've got it in place, it's really firmly in place. Uh, I, it would have been much easier to do if uh, someone hadn't tried to glue that before because uh, it would have just sort of fixed. But uh, yeah, there we go. So that is the main body section all back together. All the bits inside are as repaired as they can be. So that little peg there is back on. I've uh, fixed that little crack there and some other sort of minor bits of damage all over the place I do think this has been trodden on at some point um, it sort of looks looks that way to me but it's you know the overall effect now is it's pretty good it's always going to be a little bit sort of battered and beaten but I think that will work quite well once this is all finished because it's supposed to be Luke's land speeder and it's sort of sat on Tatooine in the sand of the desert so a little bit of wear and tear on it's not going to look too bad at all right so that part I'm going to class as done we now need to deal 
with the paint that's on these and to uh, get this off I, I've tried sort of scrubbing it I've tried lighter fluid because I thought it might be Tipex Tipex does come off with lighter fluid uh, I've tried soaking it in water because I thought it might be emulsion paint but it's not so we're going to have to resort to the old favorite which is dot four brake fluid so this is just normal brake fluid you can pick this up from most sort of um, car places uh, I'll put it in a plastic tub just to make it easier to work with I'm going to dunk these in there leave it for between half an hour to an hour and then it should all start to come off and scrape off and we can see what the chrome is like underneath I imagine the chrome is going to be pretty worn and pretty damaged so uh, we'll sort that out once it's all uh, removed but uh, yeah let's get this paint off so again yeah this is just dot four brake fluid just dunk it in leave it for sort of half an hour-ish and I will come back and check it uh, but it should have started coming off by then uh, unfortunately I don't have enough dot four to uh, submerge these completely so I'm gonna have to do it in sort of parts I'll do the front part first and then turn them over and do the other part but yeah let's leave that and then we'll get back to scrubbing And there we go that is all of the paint removed and as you can see it's actually taken off all of the chrome as well which is not unexpected really uh, and what we've ended up with is some very clean looking plates here they're looking uh, really very nice and I'm now in two minds as to uh, whether to chrome them at all because I quite like this sort of grey look on the original toy I'm going to bring in my original version of uh, a land speeder so this is one I have in my collection that's what it looks like with this shiny chrome but actually with this sort of dull grey I think it's going to look really nice so uh, for now I'm going to leave these as is and if you're wondering how I've removed the paint what sort of tools I used I've actually bought myself a pack of uh, tools for repairing mobile phones and those come with all sorts of plastic tools and things for scraping and scratching and prizing and I've used a selection of those to remove the paint because the plastic doesn't scratch the plastic you're essentially using one soft plastic on another and it doesn't scratch it so you can get into all of the grooves and sort of pick out the paint and that's what I was using these packs I think it costs like three pounds or something you get all of these tools in fact there's tweezers and all sorts with it so it was a really cheap pack to buy I just happened to store it in my Star Wars tin so uh, those are the tools that I use to uh, remove the paint now we come on to uh, the first bit of fabrication which is this uh, pin that goes in the front to open the uh, little hatch here I've taken the one out of my own uh, light and speeder just to see what it looks like and that's all it is it's incredibly simple we basically got a little uh, cylinder of plastic and then this slightly sort of shaped piece and that is what opens the uh, canopy there so if I take this apart we can slot that in and you can see what happens is when you push on that piece it unlatches the bonnet and it opens it's really simple there's no springs involved or anything so what we've got to do is recreate this tiny shape which shouldn't be too hard so we've got a little uh, sort of cylinder of plastic which is about four millimeters and I just so happen to have some four millimeter styrene rods that I bought for another project so I'm going to use that to make that part and then the rest can be made out of a flat piece of styrene as long as we get the measurements right so the height of that is about one centimeter so 10 millimeters and the length of it is what are we looking at there about 15 millimeters so one and a half centimeters so from that it shouldn't be too hard to make at all I'll just sort of cut something we've got a little curve to put on this side and a sort of pointy bit that that end the main part of this looks like it's about two millimeters and that thick bit at the end is three millimeters so all of this can be made out of uh, some two millimeter styrene sheet and some half millimeter styrene sheet and that little piece of uh, styrene rod shouldn't take more than about 10 minutes to make that so um, let's quickly fabricate that and see if it works <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
And there we go, after 10 minutes work, that is what I've made. It's a pretty close uh, representation of, of what was there. So this is just made out of a two millimeter styrene sheet. I've added little bits of half millimeter styrene sheet just to sort of thicken up this uh, pointy part at the end, which is uh, quite a key part of it. Then I've used some uh, four millimeter styrene rod to make this little uh, sort of button part. And I think that's going to work. So the only way to sort of actually test this is to put it in the vehicle. So let's uh, get the uh, land speeder. So this goes in that way round, just rest like that. And then we do have to put the side panels on because those hold it in place. You can see they have a little bit of a bracket that holds the front of that in place. So if I drop those in like so, and then we'll put the bottom on. Make sure everything is lined up. like that. There you go, so there's the little button on the front and if I press that the little hood should pop open, which it does. And then we can close it. Yeah, so that's all working. So it's a very simple thing to make. Um, obviously if you have one to copy it's incredibly simple, uh, but you essentially just sort of copying the shape of uh, what's there and um, that's what I've got. I need to paint it, but I'll do that towards the end because we've still got to make that little handle piece there. But it does work. So there we go. We've fabricated the tiny little uh, lever that um, allows you to access the hood on the land speeder. Now we come on to the uh, lever that activates the sort of the levitation section. So this is completely missing. And again, what I've done is I've taken apart my uh, Kenner land speeder and I pulled this out. So this is the lever. And when you look at it and sort of break it down in, into its sort of component parts, it's not actually that complicated. We've got a sort of an angled piece here. There's a little bar across the bottom, which is just what it uh, sort of uh, pivots on. There's a ball on the top, which doesn't actually do anything. It's just sort of the gear stick. Uh, and then we've got a little lump on this side. So it's certainly something I think I can make. I've got some uh, styrene sheet here in black, and this is a two millimeter sheet. So it looks like uh, the main part of this is two millimeters, which it is. So that's two millimeters. The bit on the bottom, is three millimeters. So if I make an angled piece out of two millimeters and then stick uh, a one millimeter sheet piece on the bottom as well, and then it looks like this piece in the middle, is that just going to be three millimeters? It is, so we've got to add a little angled piece in the middle there. Uh, a ball on the end, which maybe I can use a piece of Lego or something, and a little bar there, which again, probably a piece of Lego, or I may have some styrene rod that is uh, that diameter. So yeah, let's just get making. I'm just going to sort of basically copy this. I'll make some measurements and get cutting.
and there we go that is what I have made so this is my sort of version of this little lever this is made out of some two millimeter styrene sheet a bit of uh, one millimeter styrene sheet just to thicken that up then there's a little bit of uh, one millimeter styrene there just to add that ridge that's a uh, I guess part of the sort of locking mechanism. I very crudely made a little uh, knob to go on the end of this just with some uh, two millimeter styrene sheet which I've rounded off. I will actually spray paint this all once it's uh, sort of working and then we know it works I'll give it a coat of uh, a black uh, spray paint and that should hide all of these sort of uh, sort of slightly rough edges uh, and then that is a tiny bit of a Lego uh, antenna there just to add the little pivot point. So really what we've got to do is give this a test. Um, I'm gonna have to put part of the uh, bottom of the uh, land speeder back together just to get all the springs in but um, we'll give it a test and see if it works. Okay so I've just uh, quickly sort of put this back together so that's the sort of uh, mechanism that levitates it. There are four springs that go on uh, either corner. I've salvaged a couple more springs from that other uh, land speeder that I have to put at the front there. So we've got two springs at the front, one on either side, two at the back. So that you can see now has all of the springs in place. And this is the lever that I've made. So what happens is when you pull this lever back, it raises everything up and pulls these wheels inside the body of the land speed. And you can see that that is working. But the only real way to test it is to drop this top section on. So we've got to make sure that the gear stick goes through that little hole there. And then we can line all of these up. I don't have to put all of the panels in because at this stage it really doesn't matter. This is just a test that these wheels go in. So there you go. You can see the wheels are down. And then if I pull this lever back and lock it in place, the wheels should be hidden inside, which they are. They look like they're possibly raised up a little bit too far there. So it may be that I need to shorten the post. Yeah, I think I need to shorten that post because the wheel should just be coming out the bottom. That front wheel is in the right position, but these ones at the back are raised too high. So I need to shorten the post that pulls everything up, but that's not bad. That really is working quite well. And then we can let that down and the wheels go down. Very happy with that, considering that it's just made out of styrene and a piece of Lego. It's working remarkably well. So I'll make a few little modifications to that. Then I'm going to give it a quick coat with some uh, black spray just so that it looks sort of nice and finished. Because at the moment you can see my sort of rough edges where I've uh, shaped it and uh, sanded it. The spray paint will hide all of that, but that is going to work really nicely. So I've just made a couple of quick modifications to that. Essentially the uh, post that pushes everything up I've shortened slightly. I've also sprayed it black so it just looks like a nice even black. And this is the first time I've put everything back together. This is not the final sort of put together. I've just pushed it all together just to test it so we can push that in place. That locks the wheels up. You can see it's all coming apart because I haven't put the screws in. And then if I push that to one side they pop down. That is really working well. I'm very happy with this. It actually feels like we're getting somewhere. And again, the clip at the front does work. So I think I'm pretty much ready to uh, put all of this back together, bar that needs a bit of a paint. So I'm just gonna mix up some uh, acrylic paints and give that a quick coat. We don't actually have to put a huge amount on. Essentially, if I paint that little button piece brown, then I think you can just about see a little bit in there. So if I paint that little clip piece brown as well, the rest of it can stay white because you um, can't actually see it inside there. So quick coat of paint on that. Then I'll screw this together. I think that will have to do. The uh, seats we're gonna deal with in a separate way. I think in my previous uh, restoration on one of these, uh, because all the clips are broken, I ended up sticking this in with some double-sided sort of thick sticky pads and that worked really well. It's a really simple sort of way of reattaching them. And it means that I can then also take the toy apart if I need to in future. I think trying to rebuild these clips is just not an option, especially as this one's already been damaged multiple times. Um, so I think the double-sided sticky pads is probably the best way to go you can just stick those back in so yeah quick coat of paint on this and then um, we'll sort of put it back together finally and then we'll start dealing with some of the other sort of cosmetic issues Now we come on to the uh, chroming or not to chrome. As I couldn't make up my mind, I asked my Patreons and YouTube channel members to decide what the answer would be. And they have unanimously decided that it should be re-chromed. So I'm going to say a massive thank you to them for making the decision. And that, uh, that is what I'm going to do now. Uh, and if you want to help Toy Ploy and support Toy Ploy, then uh, why not think about becoming a Patreon? You can follow the link in the description to find out more about that. Or you can become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button 
below this video uh, do please check those out so what am i going to do for the chroming well i'm going to be using this which is the stuart semple mirror chrome i find this gives a really good uh, sort of quick result and that for something with a large area like this will uh, go on really nicely and really easily i could use the molotow liquid chrome pens but i'm finding that this stuff uh, works better on these sort of large flat surfaces so i've just got to give it a really good shake and then apply it in a sort of a thin coat all over i don't really need to prep this you can put a sort of gloss finish on and that might sort of gives it a slightly shinier result but this is already a pretty smooth surface and i think it will give a, a, a fairly nice result just straight onto the plastic so uh, that's what i'm going to do <music> Now everything's painted we can put it back together so i've already put the uh, bottom section together so this is where the sort of uh, gear lever goes we've got the four springs on either corner to put the top part together we need to take this top section turn it over because uh, this new little lever that we've put in tends to fall out so we can just drop that in place there it just goes between those two little uh, posts at the front then we can take the newly crowned side panels and we'll drop those in like that make sure they're all lined up like so and then we need to grab the bottom section and sort of uh, wiggle it and line it up. The gear stick is the most awkward bit because it needs to go through the little hole in the middle in the sort of top section of the uh, land speeder. So we just have to sort of wiggle that together, make sure that goes in and then line up all of the posts and should just push together. And then we can put the uh, four screws back in. There we go. So that's it all together. You can see it's already looking really nice. So I'm just going to put these four screws back in then we'll start dealing with some of the uh, issues on the top and there you go that is the screws in so we can now put the seats in and i'm going to use exactly the same uh, method i used in my previous video so i've just bought some uh, double-sided sponge pads these are actually uh, sellotape sponge pads and i've sort of layered up a few of them just to get it so that it's uh, in line with the bottom of the seats um it's just an easy way of fixing these in and it means that if i ever need to do any more work on this i know that i can remove the seats because i just have to uh, sort of loosen up these sticky pads and it will uh, be removed but it does hold them in really quite well so so um, let's get those put in place. I've just got to remove this final sticky uh, protection pad on the bottom of these, like so. And then we'll drop those in, make sure it's all lined up and push it in place. And there we go. They are in and they feel pretty firm. They're not going to fall out. That's all that we needed. Now, the windscreen as well, I am going to be doing exactly the same as I did previously. So uh, if you want to see how I made this, check out my previous video on this. It's made out of a Christmas bauble. So this was uh, cut using a Dremel. I've modified what I did in the previous video ever so slightly. In the previous video, these tabs are actually stuck on. In this instance, I was just very careful when I cut it. You can see this is my masking tape just to work out where to cut the line so I can remove that. So you can see I've cut the uh, tabs all in one go so uh, this is an exact replacement now for the cockpit and it fits remarkably well but if you want to see how i made it properly uh, then do check out that previous video but that is a very good representation of the original cockpit glass or windscreen for the land speeder but we're still missing one other thing and that is the stickers there's supposed to be a couple of stickers there one on the console this one does have the sticker inside there which i'm not going to bother replacing so what i've done is i've gone into photoshop i found a scan that was okay of uh, the uh, sort of original stickers but it's not that great quality so i've spent some time redrawing them all making them nice and fresh and nice and crisp 
I thought while I was doing that I might as well add a little custom as well because this land speeder to me has always been missing one thing. So I've made a little custom sticker that can be stuck over one of the engines to make it look like the sand people have removed the covers from it. So let's print those out and see what they look like. And this is what I made. I'm really happy with how they came out. So I've essentially redrawn all of those original stickers that you see at the top. And at the bottom, I've created these two stickers that show the insides of the engines or the insides of the jets. I've done two different versions because I wasn't quite sure which one I prefer. This one's a little bit darker with some sort of brown tones in it. This one, a little bit lighter with just some sort of grey panelling on it. I think if you look at the photos of uh, the original uh, prop for the Land Speeder, it's just sort of grey colours. But I actually think these sort of brown ones will tone in better with the look of the toy. So let's get these all cut out and put on the vehicle and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all finished. And here we go, here is the finished land speed and I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. It's been an awful lot of work just because there's been so many areas to fix but it's really been worth it. We've got uh, everything now back up and running. So you can see we have the little hatch at the front. If I press that button it opens the hatch and we can look inside at the engine. Uh, we've obviously repaired this rear jet that has now been reattached. We've rebuilt the sort of landing gear mechanism so if I move the little lever in here you can see the wheels go up and if I move it back to the other side they drop down again so that all works and that gives the levitation mode. We've re-chromed these side panels and I do need to say a massive thank you to my Patreons and YouTube channel members for uh, helping me decide uh, what to do on that and as I've said before if you want to become a Patreon or YouTube channel member follow the link below or hit the join button beneath this video. We've also created some uh, custom stickers so you can see I've replaced all the stickers on the inside there there's just a few on the cockpit and I've made this custom sticker to go on the engine here just to show the sort of internal workings of it like the uh, Tuscan Raiders have uh, removed the panel. I've had a few uh, little issues with my printer. I've got a new printer and it's not printing out quite how I want so uh, this is not going to be the sort of a finished sticker. I need to uh, play with the settings a bit more. It's a little bit light and the, the black hasn't come out quite as black as I wanted so I'm going to be sort of reworking that but for now the overall effect is pretty good and you can see this does now look like a really nice displayable piece and it's certainly going to go well with the rest of my collection of repaired and restored Star Wars vehicles and if you want to grab this file for yourself to print out your own stickers then do check out toyploy.com you can download that there along with a whole host of other replacement uh, PDF files for various stickers sheets that I've created over the years. If you've enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. And here's just a quick update to add to the end of this video. As I mentioned I wasn't really happy with how the stickers had come out. The uh, new printer I've got has got some sort of some strange settings and that so after a lot of playing and a lot of sort of messing around I've now got the stickers to print how I want. This is a much darker black. I've actually done this on a glossy printer paper and as you can see that's looking really nice. I've also reprinted all the stickers inside as well because I just wasn't happy with how that finish had sort of come out. So there you go this is now the finished version of the land speeder. Sometimes when you get new bits of equipment, new printers and things like that, it takes a while to work out what combination of paper, what combination of settings works best. And on this new one, it's taken me a little while. The old printer I had was fantastic, but unfortunately it failed after many, many years of uh, sort of use of printing stickers for toys. So I'm now learning on this new one and it seems to be doing a reasonable job now that I've got the settings set up. So there you go. This is the finished version of the land speeder. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.